Welcome back, folks. We got another insider intel update for today. Now, I've been compiling information from emails and uh, the emails that I receive over the last few days and other messages and comments and talks that I've had with folks in various different industries all across the country and even some outside of the U.S., and I want to share this insider intel with you all to keep you guys informed and updated about what's going on out there in the world. If you have anything you would like to add that could help the family uh, and keep them informed and the community, please uh, help them with their preparedness. Send an email. Check the description box below. My email is in short supply on yt at gmail.com. Thank you all so much in advance for your kindness and willingness to help so many people in need. All right, now, guys, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Oh, real quick, real quick. And I want to ask you a question that I want to discuss on a uh, I want to discuss further on a future video. So I just need you guys to answer this question for me or these two questions for me. I came across this and I wanted your opinions, folks. So please comment down below and let me know what you think. Now, it says uh, I care for my mother, 90 years old, and my husband, 73 years old. He contributes nothing. I work and pay all the bills. What hope do I have? That sounds rough. That sounds rough, rough life. But uh, it is uh, someone's life nonetheless. And I'm kind of curious of what you guys think about what hope this woman has. And then also, oh, and this one too. Do you think this woman is a fool? Not the same woman, different woman. Uh, she says, I married my husband after being together for 25 years. Now he wants a divorce. I will be left with nothing. What can I do? So these are two tough, very tough questions that I'm hoping to get some opinions on and maybe some real life experiences that we can share and possibly help these folks. So first, some important news headlines that caught my attention that I wanted to share with you all. Market Watch. Home builders struggle to find buyers as cancellations by developers are on the rise. And Forbes says that the housing market recession is a record share of homes for sale and they're all new construction. Now, this is actually concerning because you knew we, you know, obviously we had a huge housing supply issue during the pandemic, which um, there was just limited available inventory. So the, Developers and home builders were rushing to try to get homes built to meet the demand while we had supply chain issues and crazy high lumber prices. Uh, but now their homes are sitting and this is uh, it's interesting how quickly this this table can turn and uh, how you want to be smart about the investments you choose to get involved with. But top line, the share of new homes on the market surged to record levels last quarter as mortgage rates jumped to a 22-year high. According to real estate brokerage Redfin, forcing builders to offload homes with steep incentives and a lower price in a bid to attract prospective buyers, which obviously from the builder's perspective, from the builder side and builder perspective, it's not great, but from the buyer side, from the investor side, this could be a huge opportunity to pick up some brand new homes with steep incentives. And you got to know, you got to realize that these builders are on tight terms with their financing and need to uh, close out these loans and get them paid. These balances paid off on these construction loans quickly ASAP, or it's going to cost them a lot of money which could potentially put them in a position similar to the automotive industry. You guys may want to go check out Lucky Lopez because he puts out great content and great info on the automotive industry, but he was breaking down the carrying costs of the auto, the, the car dealerships inventories and their loans and how they get to a point of being completely upside down. And then they have to continuously raise their price to offset the losses, which then puts them in this downward spiral of basically default and bankruptcy as they're holding on to these assets that continue to go down in value that they keep trying to raise the prices on. And we are seeing some form of demand destruction in the markets as a result of higher interest rates and just the negative impacts of the economy for some uh, and uh, higher prices, higher interest rates. Car dealerships are in trouble. Home builders could be next. So key facts, a record 29% of single family homes for sale in the third quarter were newly constructed, climbing from 25% in the same period last year and 18% in 2020. 
thanks in part to the highest number of new homes finishing construction and entering the market since 2007, according to a Redfin report. And newly built homes have been making up a growing portion of the overall housing supply since 2011, when buildings started to rebound after the financial crisis. But Redfin notes the trend is now intensifying due to a surge in construction during the pandemic and a recent slowdown in existing homeowners putting their homes for sale. Homeowners are slow to put their homes for sale for numerous reasons. Main one being the next purchase is going to probably cost them more. And the next purchase is probably going to come with a higher interest rate. And the prospective buyers of the home that they could potentially be putting up for sale are going to be, they're going to have their buying power reduced because of higher interest rates. This is quite the conundrum we have here, folks. Now, in a statement, Redfin agent Faith Floyd said, home builders who started Scores of projects during the pandemic era home buying frenzy are now stuck with a bunch of new houses that are hard to sell because mortgage rates have risen to 7%, driving up the cost of new mortgages by an average of $800 per month. So 2020, you were uh, in, you know, 2020 folks, a lot of folks were looking for houses. They were looking for a new home, first time home, maybe. And they had the ability to work from home for a lot of the uh, jobs and positions that were out there, as well as the folks out there who were sitting on and collecting unemployment. You, No one had to leave their house, basically. So, you know, the desire and the demand for homes shot up. But think about it. Two years later, the same house would cost you $800 on average more per month for the same house. Tough times we're in. Now, as demand craters, the impact has been harshest on pandemic boom towns or areas that saw home buying and demand surge during the pandemic, but now have been hit hardest by the death in prospective buyers. Now, this is according to Redfin, which notes that the highest percentage of new homes for sale in the markets like El Paso, Texas, Oklahoma City, uh, Oklahoma City, Omaha, Nebraska, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Houston, Texas, uh, which says that for buyers, that has meant offering a slew of incentives to attract bidders with new builders buying down a buyer's mortgage rate by one and a half percent, one and a half percentage points, in addition to paying down closing costs and offering free appliances. This is a, this is a very rapid and a quick shift in turn. You guys may recall there was a family, I believe they were in Texas, and they actually had a home being built, a custom home being built for them. And the builder actually canceled their contract uh, after they sold their home. They sold their primary residence and they uh, were prepared financially with a mortgage to buy this uh, finance, this home, purchase this home after the builder completed it. They waited for months. Uh, they kept getting pushed back. They even had prices go up a little bit. And then the builder, when it was completed, canceled the contract on them to sell to another buyer as there was a bidding war on the house and they sold it for like two or three hundred thousand dollars more than what they agreed to build it for the original builder original buyer well that table has turned and those builders i hope they go out of business for taking advantage of these folks and uh price gouging and fixing the market but at the end of the day the tables have turned and there's no more bidding wars there's no more line of buyers there's no more over asking you know waiving all contingencies in most markets and uh now you're seeing builders having to offer steep incentives and offer to uh pay down for closing costs and percentage points which folks if you're looking to buy and you're going to finance you need to know how you can uh adjust these rates and buy them down so that you're not paying the highest rates It'll give you some time and perhaps maybe over the next year, two or three, we will see some sort of pivot from the Fed, which will lower mortgage interest rates and uh, bring your monthly costs down. So if you guys want to know more about that, let me know. Uh, Meanwhile, builders are likely to construct fewer homes next year as they are forced to lower prices to help bolster demand. With some experts predicting new home prices in former pandemic hotspots could tumble as much as 20 percent by early next year. That would be critical. But Much like I've been telling you guys all along, be prepared. Uh, If your home value drops by 20% and you had no intention to sell, this doesn't really affect you. It doesn't matter. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. But if you are looking to sell, then you may want to formulate a strategy with a really strong relationship-based realtor group and team that can get you what you need out of your home. It's not an agent. 
it's not picking up the phone and calling an agent. It is finding a realtor who knows what they're doing, who knows the markets and knows how to manage and navigate these times. If you're in the Atlanta area, actually, if you're anywhere interested in a realtor team that can help you with that, uh, anywhere in the country, actually, just hit me up. I've got the ones for you. And it says that a crucial quote here is that builders are giving away everything but the kitchen sink to attract bidders. I've seen at least one offer uh, a $10,000 check for closing costs, a $3,000 gift card, and a free refrigerator. And this is one way builders will ding themselves out of the hole that they're in. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to cut their margins down to to pennies and possibly break even or lose money on these uh, builds, this new construction homes just to get out. And that's the situation that they're in. That's how quickly this economy can change. But this is also why you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Uh, Despite the rash of incentives, Home builders are starting to throw at buyers. Many experts say it may not be smart to buy a home until rates come down. Now, I've been saying that, too. It's the worst time to buy a home in a very long time, according to Columbia real estate professor Christopher Mayer, who recently told Marketplace the Mortgage Bankers Association projects rates will fall to about five and a half percent by the end of this year. Um yeah, I, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. Five and a half percent by the end of this year, he's he's out of his mind. No way. No way. The, the Fed's not going to pivot. It's not going to happen. The Fed won't. Perhaps maybe there'll be some uh, incentive offered by the banks uh, or by these mortgage brokers, but the Fed's not going to do it. And uh, yeah, this is this is probably the worst time to buy a home, depending on how much you're paying for it and depending on if you're going to be paying cash or financing. See what I'm saying? So key background here is that skyrocketing inflation has forced central banks around the world to reserve pandemic era policy measures meant to bolster markets and the federal reserves rate hikes this year have hit the formerly booming housing market particularly hard new home sales plunged to a six-year low this summer as mortgage rates jumped to a 22-year high and plunging mortgage applications suggest that the collapse will only get worse and this is according to the research firm Pathion Macroeconomics, uh, and they project monthly new home sales could fall to a 10-year low of 350,000 units as soon as this month. Hey, these are the experts, okay? All right, so now I want to get into the insider intel that has been sent in and collected over the last few days from you guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh First one here says, this Christmas, I'm not going to be able to get anything for my kids. Very sad. Inflation so high. Bills are so high. Skyrocket. Getting, uh, cannot believe that I don't want to lose everything. So I have to sacrifice time this year. Wish the government would really get off their effing asses and help us out. Um, uh, send. St- I think he says stimulus. Help us out with some stimulus. Send it out ASAP. Sometimes I feel like turning to the dark side to get fast money. What should I do? Well, I can't tell you what to do, but I will say don't turn to the dark side. Mm-mm. Go uh, go to join the resistance. Don't go to the dark side. But, um, you know, the stimulus, send it out ASAP. Stimulus is not it's not going to help. I'll tell you that right now, guys. If you're sitting here waiting, banking on, hoping for a stimulus, it ain't going to help. It ain't going to help. It's, it's a drop in the bucket. They'll send you $1,000. They'll send you 2000 Maybe they send you three. Maybe you'll get some breathing room. But, you know, honestly, it's just it's not enough to really put a dent in it. And depending on what you do with that, if you're already one, two, three thousand, four thousand dollars $4,000 in the hole, that just, that just makes you whole. That just breaks you even. You're still behind. You're still not progressing. You have to find a way to capitalize on the opportunities that exist currently to uh, drive up your income, reduce your expenses, tighten up your budget. It's the only way you're going to survive this. It's the only way. So the next one here says you made an excellent point that really needs to be taught in school. This must have been from my previous video. And it says that whenever I try to help someone get their ish together and explain budget and finance, the very first thing I do is ask them to stop looking at what they pay a month for things and start looking at what they pay yearly, bi-yearly, and every five years. It paints a shockingly different picture. This is a little off topic, but this diesel thing doesn't bother me. You never or you you never notice about every oh it says have you ever noticed about every six or seven years the u.s faces some kind of emergency that benefits big banks diesel shortage and a lot of companies will have to draw on credit exactly when the fed just so happened to raise interest rates a few points hmm what's the odds in that 
you can almost mark it down on a calendar. I told you guys this is a chess game, and it's not the move that you see being made. It's the move that's going to be made down the down the road, three, four, five moves ahead. Okay, and this is touching on that right here, and you know it's a strategy. There is a, there is a goal. There's an agenda. It's usually not in alignment with what we're being told. Mainstream media is part of that problem, but you know some people are just deceived and puppets at that, and they are just spouting out and spewing and reading whatever's on the teleprompter next one says i work for a well-known car dealership in the midwest and we are upside down on most of our used car inventory and customers are few and far between since interest rates have climbed i'm worried the dealership may get called on their floor plan and go bust if they can't afford to pay for it all i'm actively seeking a new job while i still can i'm gonna tell you right now there's no way i would want to be in the uh in the in the automotive industry, in the automotive sales industry right now. Absolutely no way. Perhaps maybe in the repo industry, I would want to I would I would want to be there, but even that that's a little dangerous if I'm out there trying to collect these cars. You know how dangerous it is trying to repo these cars. But there's no way I would want to be trying to sell them right now. It's a losing proposition. No way. You, don't buy a car for the next year. Plain and simple. Not gonna happen. If you would like uh, uh, you know so basically this is what we got, folks. You know, um, uh, I'm going to continue to put more of this information together and share it with you folks. If this is something that you enjoy, something that you like, if you want me to cover something and touch on something in particular, just let me know. Drop a comment, ship me an email. And, uh, you know, I will continue to bring you these current economic updates as far as the climate, high prices and rapid inflation with the higher interest rates to come that we're bound to see. I don't see it going to five and a half percent like that one guy said. I'm going to continue preparing my family financially, personally, business wise, continue to work to tighten my own budgets. I hope you guys are doing the same while investing in business opportunities, growth assets, cash flow producing assets, the stock market, the crypto market, and further building out my brand in alignment with profitable businesses that are continuing with heavy investing in product review, promotion, and affiliate sponsorships that provide me with great, steady, passive income streams and helping to maintain during these rough economic times. Thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it for the continued love and support to supply you, to allow me the ability to supply you guys with knowledge information and most importantly the truth uh if you guys uh i hope you guys all the best i wish you were safe a safe and happy thursday i think today is thursday and, and i will see you guys on the next one take care bye